friends uh, welcome to our today's session let us continue our discussion on rate of taxes previous session we had already discussed what are the rate of income tax applicable to individuals and partnership firms is it done prior to that we have understood one basic concept that every person whose total income of the previous year exceeds a maximum amount which is not chargeable to income tax he will be referred to as an assessee and he will be chargeable to income tax at the rate or rates which is prescribed generally in the finance act and we have to refer to the finance act of the relevant assessment year friends now we have already understood what is the meaning of assessment year and what is the meaning of previous year is it done and you are aware of the fact that income which is earned during the previous year is assessed to tax in the subsequent year which is reported as assessment year okay the provisions of the tax rates that we are learning that is for the assessment year 22 23 okay assessment year 22 23 is going to start on 1st april 2022 and it will end on 31st march 2023 okay yes, and sir. the previous year relevant to that assessment year is 21 22 which is going on right now and this will end on 31st march 2021 got it okay and for assessment year 22 23 we have to refer to the relevant finance act relevant finance act actually the finance act 2022 2022 has not yet come it will be coming in february is it not but since we are having finance act 2021 r we have already seen this rate is already there future tax rate is already mentioned there but only thing is that it is there in the part 3 of schedule 1 to finance act okay as advanced tax rate as tds rate for salary employees and the same part in the coming act in the coming up coming finance act that is finance act 2022 will find the part 3 of schedule 1 will be copied there from and will be pasted as part 1 that will become the correct that will become the current rate understood this concept i had explained you earlier is it done so i request all of you this time when the finance bill comes please go through it see where exactly income tax rates are mentioned you have to report to the fast schedule of the finance bill part 1 part 2 part 3 part 4 so if you refer to that you will find out in this bill also you can find out tax rates for assessment year 23 24 also you can find out okay is it clear to you yes yes sir. yeah so friends this tax yes, rates sir. are friends this tax rates are relevant for us because one thing is that we have to first compute total income that is one thing we know there are five heads of income okay those income will be aggregated then clubbing provision set up of carry forwarded losses will be applied then chapter 6 a deductions will be allowed there from will be arriving, arriving at the total income. that is one thing we will be learning all these provisions separately okay we will be learning how to compute income under the head salary how to compute income under the head uh, income from house property or from profit and gains of business profession or from capital gains or from income from other sources separately we will be learning that but through that we will be knowing what will be my total income that is one part but next thing is that on that income i have to apply a rate then only i'll be able to compute my tax liability right friends now this rates are mentioned in the generally in the finance act and i have to report to the relevant finance act. but there are some specific rates like long term capital gain taxes and lotteries etc which are mentioned in the income tax act itself that is also an appropriate time to be done after this it is clear and also you know the source if you want to find out the rates where you can find it out you can visit to the income tax department's website okay so you can find out there is a link rates and charts charts you can click there you can find out tax rates okay other rates also tds rates advanced tax rate all links are there you can easily find okay so that is the source the same thing i am showing you in slide but as a professional student i expect all of you should refer to the source okay 
because source gets updated. That is the updated thing. Slides may become outdated, books may become outdated, but source will automatically update it. Right? Department updates that. Well, friends, having understood that, having understood that uh, in case of individuals, we know multiple rates are applied. That means slab rate is applied. Up to certain income, maybe 5%, then 20%, then 30%. Okay, that is one option. Or there is one alternative scheme also, you know. Is it not? 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%, 25%, and 30%. That possibilities are also there. Okay, that concept you are aware of. And you are also aware of that the basic exemption limit for an individual is what? How much? Oh, sir, uh, 2 lakhs 50,000. 2 lakh 50,000. Okay, if this question is asked to you, to you, what is your basic exemption limit? It is 2 lakh 50,000. But however, you are also aware of there is one more provision that is rebate under section 87A. Yeah, 87A, yeah, what it says, if your total income does not exceed 5 lakh rupees, then 100% of your tax or 12,500 rupees, whichever is lower, that will be allowed you as a rebate. Consequently, what happens? The people who are having income up to 5 lakh rupees pay nothing. Okay, tax is due, but what happens? This rebate is allowed to them. So consequently, tax amount becomes zero. But the person who is earning even, earning even one rupee more than five lakh rupees, he has to pay. Okay. He has to pay at least 12,500. Did you understand? So this is the situation with Sir. reference to individuals. Sir? Yes, yes. Just repeat one second, please. Yeah, what I told you in the previous session, what we have discussed, I was showing you with the help of tax calculator. Is it not? What yes. we have seen, the basic exemption limit for an individual is for a normal individual, it's 2 lakh 50,000. And for a senior citizen, how much? Basic exemption limit for a senior citizen. Senior citizen means? Senior citizen means? whose age is above 60 years, 60 years or above, but it is below 80 years. And what is the basic exemption limit for a super senior city? Five lakhs. Five lakhs, okay. And, but for a normal citizen, a normal individual, the basic exemption limit is only 2 lakh 50,000 rupees. Okay, so if somebody's, somebody earns more than 2 lakh 50,000 rupees, he has to pay at the rate of at least uh, at the rate of five percent till the income. Yeah, that means for that slab two lakh fifty thousand to five lakh rupees, he has to pay five percent. After that, five lakh to ten lakh rupees, he has to pay twenty percent. Then above ten lakh rupees, he has to pay thirty percent. We know that. Okay, but what happens because of application of section eighty-seven a person or the individuals whose total income is up to 5 lakh, they need not pay anything. Okay, suppose your income is 5 lakh rupees and you are an individual. What happens? You are supposed to pay 5%. Okay, your income is exactly 5. So 5% on that comes to 12,000. But section 87A says that if your total income does not exceed 5 lakh, your income is not exceeding 5 lakh. Then 100% of the tax, whatever tax you have come, or 12,500, whichever is lower will be allowed to you as a rebate. So your entire tax is allowed to you. Uh, rebate is allowed on your entire tax. Consequently, you need not pay. Any. Did you understand it now? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So I had previous session I had shown, shown you how to use tax calculator. All of you have remembered. Yes, so sir. You, yes, you sir. try that. You yourself try. Okay, you check your income is 5 lakh rupees. How much is the tax? 5 lakh one, how much is the tax? Income is 6 lakh rupees, 7 lakh rupees. We have also seen in which situation surcharge is applicable. Isn't it? When income exceeds 50 lakh rupees, total income exceeds, we know surcharge is applicable. All these things you have tested in the previous class. 
okay a recorded link for the previous session will be available okay you can check it there also right and after that we have also learned what is the in tax rate applicable to partnership farms anyone has remembered what is the tax rate applicable to partnership farm yes or no sir partnership firm uh, there is no uh, tax i guess but if two person are are not registered but they are partner uh, they don't have to pay the tax no 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 tax is payable by everyone you know initially sir, uh, i told you the definition of a uh, person sir, as per the shares sir as per the shareholder divisions of the shares uh, in the partnership firm so i guess it's uh, no, 30% no, no, no. No, no. around yes, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 
and in individual surcharge part, I had already told you. Okay, at what which situation surcharge is levied? Just a minute, just I want to show you once again. Yeah, this is section 87A rebate add explain you. If the total income does not exceed 5 lakh rupees, this is a deduction up to 12,500 is allowed. This is the surcharge which is applicable to individuals. Okay, surcharge is computed on the tax. On the tax about it will be computed. It may be 10% or 15% or 25% or 37%. It depends on the total income. If the total income is exceeding 50 lakh rupees, then surcharge will be 10% provided it does not exceed 1 crore. If it exceeds 1 crore, the total income will be total surcharge rate will be 15%. 15 provided it does not exceed 2 crore. Yes. If the total income is more than 2 crore, then what is the rate of surcharge? 25% does not exceed 5 crore. Yeah. Very good. And if it exceeds 5 crore? 37%. 37%. Okay, so this is the rate of surcharge you have to remember. This is the tax on tax. First, compute income tax. On that, again, you have to compute surcharge. Then on the tax amount, surcharge amount. On that total amount, what else you have to compute? Says. Uh, so health and education. Yeah, health and education says. How much is that? What is the rate? Uh, sir, uh, 4%. Fantastic. Very good. Okay, and you know this is one more optional scheme, 115 BAC, one individuals and HUF can opt for this thing, where rate of tax you can see relatively lower. But the problem here is that what is the disadvantage of this scheme? New scheme, 115 BAC, what is the disadvantage? Can anyone explain? Yes, sir. So, those tax rates will be lower. But the individual or the Hindu undivided family won't be getting any benefits that is provided, such yes. as rebates or any kind of deduction. Yes, some certain deductions, certain rebates will not be allowed. These are some examples of those things which are not allowed. Previous class we had discussed this. Okay, friends. Now, friends, today we are going to start from here. What is the tax rate applicable to? So, friends, we have already know what is the tax rate applicable to individuals, AOP, BOI, AJP. Okay, same rate is applicable. That same slam slab rate. What I told you, individual, AOP, BOI, and AJP. For all of them, the slam same slab rate is applicable. Okay, yes or no? Yes, sir. You can see at the heading. Are you able to see individual HUF AOP BOI AJP? This is the same rate. This applicable. Okay, but partnership farm you know thirty percent. That's a different. But now what we are going to learn for other kinds of assets, other types of assets, which includes companies, corporate societies, local authorities. So let us see how what is the rate applicable to them. But prior to that, let us understand what is the meaning of company. Can anyone explain me what is the meaning of company? I think I had asked the same question earlier. Can anyone tell me? You might have studied company's law also. What is the meaning of company? Would you try to, if not exactly definition, will try to explain me the meaning? What is com what is a company? Yes, sir. Also, company an artificial person. Where group of individual works uh, to earn profit. As for the definition, uh, any company which is registered under the Companies Act 2013 or, or the, any act prior to that is deemed to be a company. Fantastic. So that is the definition. But that definition, if you write here under income tax law, so we will not be able to award you any mark. That is the perfect definition under Companies Act 2013. Income tax law has tried to define it in a different way. Okay, so as you know, as a student of law, all of you know that the same term may be understood differently under different acts. So here, 
income tax act that has been defined in a separate way. So let us see how it has been defined here. This is the definition which is given under section 2, clause 20 of Companies Act, which our friend told just now. That company means a company incorporated under this act. This act means Companies Act 19, sorry, 2013 or under any previous act like Companies Act 1956 or any act prior to that. So that's a company. Okay, if it is incorporated under these acts, that can maybe referred to as a company. But under income tax law, to understand the meaning of company, I need to refer to section 2, clause 17. Okay, friends, can you refer to the section and you know, you can find out here under income tax act, income tax site, you can go, you can find out ARC schools, you can click the link on income tax act, you can find out section wise and you can easily read what is section 2, clause 17 says. It defines a company to mean, that means this is an exhaustive definition, which mean, read it, can you read it here? Yes, sir. Uh, Indian yeah. Corporation. Indian Company. It, it is Indian Company. Sorry. Sorry, sir. Uh, Indian Company. Uh, hmm. Body Corporate Incorporated by under any uh, law outside India. Okay. Now you see, first Indian Company is a company. So we'll understand what is Indian Company. Next thing is the Body Corporate Incorporated by or in, under any law outside. That means it's something, some body is incorporated outside India, that will be still regarded as a company under income tax law. But if you refer to Companies Act, what the provision says, which are incorporated under this Companies Act or earlier Act. Okay. Are you getting? So that is the difference. Income Tax Act includes foreign companies or maybe foreign non-companies who are incorporated under some other law. Okay, anybody which is incorporated under any law outside India, that's also a company. Okay, what is point C? Uh, institution, association, body assessed uh, as company on or before uh, 1st April 1970. Okay. Institution. So yeah, read it, read out. Institution, association body declared by CBDT as a company. So if an institution, association body, which is being assessed as a company on or before 1 4 1970, that will continue to be assessed as a company. It doesn't matter whether that is a company or it is an institution or, or it is an university, doesn't matter. But if it is assessed as a company, then that will be treated as a company. Then institution as association or body declared by Central Board of Directors taxes as a company. This CBDT has got a power to declare an institution, association or body as a company. If it declares, then that will be assessed as a company. Understood the definition of a company? But how, here, yes, what is important here? First of all, we need to know what is Indian company. Indian companies are irrespective of in any condition in, or you can say invariably Indian company is a company. Okay, so what is that Indian company? To understand the meaning of income company, I have to refer to section 2, clause 26 of Income Tax Act 1961. Okay. Now, Point by point, let us read it here. Okay, exact section is reproduced here. So let us read it. I request some of you to please, please read it with uh, by giving uh, giving pause at appropriate places. So please tell me. Please read it out. So means a company formed and registered under the Companies Act 2013 and includes. Please wait. Uh, please, wait please wait. Now tell me, friends. You have read up to this. Tell me whether this definition is an inclusive definition or an exhaustive definition. Both, sir. Both, both, both. 
okay you see it says means a company permanent registered under company act 2013 that is included and it includes some other things are also specifically in and it includes point number 1 now please continue a company formed and registered under any law relating to companies uh, uh, formally in force and in part of uh, india uh, other than the state of jammu kashmir uh, and the union territories specified in sub clause 3 of this clause now friends please wait so that means what is included under indian company company which is formed and registered under any law relating to the companies formerly in force in any part of so there are many places there were many places in india where different laws were there. okay in some specific northeast states there is a different company sir okay so what will happen what this is if a company is incorporated or company is formed or registered under any law which was formerly in force right now it is not in force but in earlier it was in force in any part of it. and under that law it has been if this company has been incorporated so that will be still regarded as an indian company understood yes sir is okay point 2 sorry corporation established by or under a central uh, state central state or provisional act okay. there are many corporations corporations means by special act they have been incorporated they are not incorporated under companies state government or central government passes a separate law and a corporation gets incorporated so in our state or in different states you can find out various corporations are there which are not incorporated under companies if you visit ministry of corporate affairs or uh, refer to roc you cannot find detail of those things they are corporations not not companies okay some of them are maybe incorporated as companies but some of them may not okay so yes sir all those corporations which are established under central state or provincial law, they may not be companies under companies act because they are not incorporated as a company but under income tax act they are 100% called as indian company yes sir okay is it clear to you yes sir okay. yes sir okay there are many corporations who are yes uh, okay you can find out the list of corporations you can which are not companies but they are established as a central or state government corporations okay point number 3 third point any institution association mm-hmm. or okay. body which is declared by the board to be company under clause uh, sub clause 7 uh, 17 okay so this is the power given to the central board of direct access board here means cbdt it can declare any association institution or body as a company to be declared in the public point 4 uh, in the case of state of jammu and kashmir a company formed and registered under any law for the time being in force in that state okay if there was some company which was for the time being in force in at that point of time there was a law and it has incorporated as a company that will be still regarded as an indian company okay now friends we are learning the definition of indian company. so any company which is incorporated under any law which was at any time in force in the state of jammu and kashmir that will be still regarded as an indian company then point 5 in the case of any of the union territories of dabra and nagar haveli goa uh, daman and diu and pondicherry a company formed and registered under any law for the time being in force in that union territory so friends there were some union territories where different laws were there respect to companies so if 
some entities or some companies incorporate under those law which were at any point of time enforced okay earlier it was enforced in those event agreements so all those companies which are incorporated under those laws will be always regarded as an indian okay right so yes, all sir. these things we have understood that means these are the companies which are regarded as indian companies and there is one proviso last last point please read it sir provided that the registered or as the case may be principal office of the company corporation institution association or body in all the cases in is in india so i told you company means this thing and it in uh, sorry indian company means this and it includes 1 2 3 4 5 so provided so it's registered office or its principal office okay is located in india if that is so then that will be regarded as an indian company right and once yes, it is an indian company under income tax law it is always a company because the definition of company means indian company and indian company means this means and includes this is it clear to you yes sir okay oh, it's fine yes sir now company is one type of assets you know various types seven category of persons are there Is it not? Have you remember individual H U A, P O P B O I, right? Company, local authority, then artificial judicial person. So seven category of persons are there. Company is a person. Company is one person. It doesn't matter whether it is what kind of company it is, whether it is a public company, private company, according to company act. But company is one category of person. But for tax rate purpose. now you have to segregate the companies under income tax law into two categories for rate purpose what are the two categories one is can you see can you watch it can you tell me what are these two category of companies i am referring to domestic company domestic foreign company foreign. why i am segregating like this because rates are different tax rates are different from domestic company tax rates are different from foreign even if company is one category of person but the tax rate should be different now if you look at this picture you can find out domestic company means or it includes first of all indian company and just now we have seen what is the meaning of indian that means once it is an indian company there is always a domestic company there is no option whatever might be situation it can never be a foreign if it is an indian company okay but in addition to indian company there might be some other company which may be a non indian company but still it can be regarded as a domestic company. are you getting my point now you might be thinking what is that possibility yes sir when a non indian company can become also a domestic company now read please tell me what is that situation when a non indian company can be also regarded as a domestic company will you please read out Company which has made arrangement for declaring and paying dividend yes. in India out of the income charge to tax in India. Very. Good. Now you see, if a company, it may be Indian company, it may be non-Indian company also, which has made arrangement for declaring and paying dividend, you know. Companies pay dividend out of their profit, right? Dividends are paid to the shareholders. So shareholders share the profit. Shareholders get the share, get their share of the profit through dividend. Company distributes this dividend. And if a company, it may be a non-Indian company, he has made arrangement for declaring and paying dividend within India. That means dividend has to be declared and paid within India, out of the income chargeable to tax in India. so out of the income which is 
to be chargeable to tax in India. That means his income is chargeable in India. Even if it is a non-resident company, income in some situation will be chargeable to India. Chargeable in India will be learning that concept. And if that company, which has some income which is chargeable in India, has made some arrangement for declaration and payment of dividend within India, that will be referred to as a domestic company, even if it is not an Indian company. Okay. So, advantage is that domestic company will be paying tax at a lower. So, if some company makes a specific arrangement for declaration of payment of dividend in India for uh, out of the income chargeable to tax in India, then that will be treated as domestic company and it will be subject to lower rate of tax even if it is not an Indian company. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, once we know the meaning of domestic company, now understanding the meaning of foreign company is very easy now. What's a foreign company? Will you please read it out? A company which is not a domestic company. <clears throat> first, that's it. So first you have to decide whether a company is a domestic company or not. If it is an Indian company, then we need not bother at all. Always domestic company. If it is a not an Indian company, then we have to think, we have to see if it has made some arrangement for declaration of payment of dividend in India out of the income chargeable to tax in India. Right. This is how we can classify the company into two categories. Okay. Now what I showed you, the same thing if you see section 222A, it has been explained. Domestic company means an Indian company or any other company in respect of which in respect of its income liable to tax under this act has made prescribed arrangement for declaration of payment of declaration of payment within India of dividends, including dividends or preferences payable out of such income. And what is a foreign company? It means a company which is not a domestic company. So section 2, clause 22a and clause 23a explains the meaning of domestic company and foreign company. You may refer to these two provisions in Income Tax Act. Now, now, first let us see what is the rate applicable to domestic company for the assessment year 22-23. As you can see, there are two types of rates. What are these rates? Can you tell me? During the previous year, 2019-2020, uh, does not exceed 400 crore, then uh, it is 25%. And for any other domestic company? 30%. Okay. For any other domestic company, 30%. Now, friends, you have to be very careful in understanding these provisions. The rate I am telling you is for which assessment year? For which assessment year we are discussing these rates? 2022-23. For 22-23 assessment year, what is the relevant previous year? 2019-2020. No, assessment year is 22-23. And the relevant previous year is 21-22. 21-22. But to finding out the tax rate, I am not referring to the assessment year. I am not referring to the previous year, 21-22. I am referring to the previous year, what? 1920. So I have to see the turnover of 1920. And I have to see whether this turnover has exceeded 400 crore or not. So, which, which is the previous year which is relevant? 1920. Okay. So, my assessment year is 21-22. My relevant previous year is... 20, sorry, my assessment year is 
my relevant previous year is what 21 22 okay so i am not referring 21 22 not referring 2021 20, also i am referring which previous year 1920 Is it clear to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let us say I am discussing about pet assessment here. Two thousand twenty-two twenty. So my relevant previous year. I am talking about my relevant previous year. It's what. Twenty one twenty two. Is it not relevant previous series twenty one twenty two? Prior to that, the previous prior to that, what is the previous year? Two thousand twenty twenty one. Is it not? I am not even considering that. Prior to that, what is the previous year? Got it? What is relevant for deciding that the rate of tax will be 25% or 30% for it? This is the previous year which is relevant. That means these two previous year turnovers we will be ignoring right now. You may consider it, this year will be considered again next year. But right now you have to see two years back what was the term. So, so the uh, uh, remaining years, uh, uh, 21 and 22, can be adjusted in for uh, upcoming transactions. No, no. If next year this provision again gets extended, then what will happen? For assessment year 23-24, you have to see this year, 2021. Okay, okay, sir. Got it, got it. Got it. So, last year this provision was there. This year was not prior to last year. Previous year also this provision was there. Previous year, the relevant we are considering the turnover of 1890. But now I am not considering the turnover of 1819, I am considering the turnover of 1920. Friends, let me take you to the income tax department itself. So, this is a catch you have to see. Uh, uh, just a minute. Let me take you to the income tax department's website. IncomeTaxIndia.gov.in, I'm taking you there. Okay. Now you tell me rates and charts. You see tax rates and tables are here. Okay. Let me click here. Now you see tax rates are available. So this is the individual rates we have already covered. We have seen all these things, surcharge rates, special tax rates for individuals that also we have seen, surcharge also we have seen, health and education, partnership farm we have seen, local authority will be seeing. Now you see rate for domestic call. Okay. Are you able to see it clearly? Yes, sir. Here you see, for the two assessment years, rates are already available for assessment year 21, 22 which is going to be over in 31st March. That's for we are focusing on assessment year 22-23, which is coming. For assessment year 22-23, in which situation 20% rate will be applicable? Where the total turnover or gross issue during the previous year, what? Which previous year? 1920. 1920 does not exceed 400. But if you refer to assessment year 21-22, 21-22 rate is 25%. In which situation? For its total turnover or gross issue during the previous year? 1819. 1819. So next year, if this provision continues, let us see what this coming budget says. Coming budget also, as you told you, I, you can also find the rates for assessment year 23-25. Okay. You will find, normally, you, you can expect one because budget, budget has not come. 
So you can exceed instead of 1920, 20, what will be written here? 2021. 2021. Okay. So you have to, in fact, ignore the immediate two preceding previous year's turn number. You have to consider the previous year prior to this two pre preceding previous years. Okay. Yes, sir. So, complete government has reduced the tax rate from 30% earlier, which was 30%. Now it is reduced to 25%, but with a condition. Condition is that the turnover of the company should not exceed 400. And for that thing, we have to refer to previous year 1920. We have to refer to the turnover of previous year 1920. Is it clear to you? Yes. So we will not get confused. We will not let us for the timing, let us forget the assessment year 21 22. We will remember the provision which is applicable to 22 23. And you have to see. The relevant previous year is 1920. In that case, only rate of tax is 25%. Else, the rate of tax will be how much? 30%. 30%. Okay. Now, now look at this slide. For domestic company, I told you 25%. For companies having turn number in the previous year 1920 up to 400 crore. And in case it is exceeding or equal to 400 crore, then it is 30 percent. For foreign company, there are two rates. For domestic company, incidentally, there are two rates either 25 percent or 30 percent. For foreign company, it again depends upon the type of income. If you see, if it is an income consists of Royalty received from government or Indian concern as per some specified agreement. If the government or some Indian concern has done a specific kind of agreement, which is mentioned, which is uh, let us say explained in the Income Tax Act, or fees for technical services as per specified agreement. So either it is a royalty income or it is a fee for some kind of technical services provided. For those kind of income, the rate of tax will be how much? 50%. 50%. But for other types of income, let us say some different kind of business income, trading income, then it is 40%. So for royalty income or for fees for technical services, for those kind of income, it is 50% provided it is issued from a government or Indian concern and it is as per some specified activity. Okay, so either for foreign company has to pay tax, it depends. It may be 50%, it may be 40%, it depends. What kind of income it is generating? Is it generating only some royal income or fee for technical services? Then 50%. Some other income, then it is 40%. Okay. Is it clear to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm again showing you the tax charts which is there, the income tax department's website. Uh, just a minute, let me show you foreign companies. Now you always I suggest you. Always you refer to the income tax department website to verify the things. Now you see royalty income, etc., 50%, other income, 40%. Now, there are surcharges for foreign companies or for, for companies, surcharge rates are different. So let me, uh, I think it will be better if I show you the slides now, just a minute. What is the rate applicable to or the surcharge rate? Now you see. Once you know that domestic company uh, can pay tax either 25% or 30% or a foreign company may pay 50% or 40%, you have to see the surcharge is 7% on domestic company and in 2% on foreign company. 
if the net income exceeds 1 crore. Okay, surcharge is applicable only when the net income exceeds a particular amount. Just like individuals, you know, when it exceeds 50 lakh rupees, surcharge is applicable. Here for a company, surcharge is applicable only when the net income exceeds 1 crore. But as you can see, the rate of surcharge is more in case of domestic company and less in case of foreign company. Is it not? Surcharge rate is 7% in domestic company and 2% in foreign company. But rate of tax is more in case of foreign company and is lower in case of domestic company. Understood? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Now tell me in which company tax rate is more, domestic or foreign? Foreign. 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 In, and with respect to which companies surcharge rates are more, domestic or foreign? Domestic. 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 So domestic companies pay tax at a lower rate, but pay surcharge at a higher. Rate. Foreign company pay tax at a higher rate but pay surcharge at a lower rate. And surcharge is applicable only when the total income exceeds 1 crore. Okay. And when this, when this total income will cross 10 crores, then surcharge amount will be how much? 12% for domestic company. Again, domestic company is paying more. And 5% are foreign company. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And in addition to that, sales will also be levied 4%. 4% will be income or income tax plus such. First, we'll com we're computing income tax. On that, we'll be computing surcharge. We have to see which surcharge is applicable. Maybe 7% or 12%. Or it may be 2% or 5%. Then we'll add sales to it. Okay. Now, if you read the provisions here, Uh, just a minute. Okay, that is the amount of searches. I'll tell you this thing. You can see it here. 7%, uh, 12%, 5%, 5%. That is what I told you. And uh, there are some certain specific situation. These companies may pay tax at some special rates. That means it may be 25%, maybe 22%, it may be 15%. I'll again come back here and I'll show you that thing. Now, okay, so you have understood what is the search as for this domestic company and foreign companies. Now, one more thing. Yeah, that is the summary of such as this. I was showing you income between 1 crore to 10 crore, 7%. Above 10 crore, 12% for domestic company. For foreign company, it may be 2% or 5%. Okay, is it clear to you? Yes, yes sir. Now, yes, sir. these are some specific rates for companies in different situations, which I am showing you right now. As you know, normally, rate of tax can be 25% if the total income doesn't exceed uh, 400 crores in the previous, uh, previous year, 2019-20, if the turnover doesn't exceed 400 crores. Such as that, you know. But you see, these are certain specific sections. 115 BA, 115 BAA, 115 BA, BAB. In these cases, you can find out tax rates can be 25% can be 22% also, can be 15% also. But these are certain conditions. Conditions is that company must have started business within a particular period. And company must be doing 
some manufactured production, etc. So these are certain conditions attached. Okay, so these are some, you can say some exceptional situation. We'll be also learning about those exceptional situation. Now what we'll do? Let us take a small break, maybe for ten minutes. Then we'll catch up. Okay. okay. Yes, yes, so yes, sir. Okay, uh, sir. Just a minute. Yes, friends. Uh, welcome back. So, so far, what we have discussed that for right purpose, we are classifying companies into two categories like domestic company and foreign companies. And domestic companies' tax rates are lower, whereas surcharge rates are higher in, the, in relation to foreign companies. But in case of foreign companies, you have seen tax rates are higher, but the rate of surcharge is relatively lower. Okay. The rates applicable to a domestic company may be 25%, maybe 30%. Some situation it can be 22%, can be 15% also. And the rates applicable to a foreign company normally, it depends upon the types of income. Okay, so what are the rates applicable to them in case of foreign companies? Can anyone tell me? Sir, income not exceeding 400 crores. That will be 25% of rate. Uh, the exceeding 4 crore, that will be 30% of it. Friends, this is for domestic company. Okay, okay. okay. We have to refer to the turnover of previous year, 1920. Okay, and I'm asking you rates for foreign company. Okay, sir. Can anyone tell me? Uh, so, uh, if... So, if they have uh, any royalty from government or union of India for some uh, technical service or have, as for the any kind of specified agreement, then their tax rate is fifty percent. But their surcharge rate is relatively lower. That is two percent. If their income does not exceed one crore, if it exceeds ten crore, then their surcharge rate is five. What is the rate for other type of income? which is not a royalty, uh, not a, okay, good. So friends, uh, this is what we have understood earlier, that uh, yeah, domestic company, it may be 25% or 30% and foreign companies, I had told you, it may be 50% or 40%, depends what kind of income it might be. Okay, so surcharge rates also, we have seen, you can just have a look. This is the surcharge rate for assessment year 22 23. For domestic company, 7% or 12%. If the income exceeds 1 crore but doesn't exceed 10 crore, that's 7%. If it exceeds 10 crore, then it is 12%. Foreign company, 2%. If the income is between 1 crore to 10 crore, but the moment it exceeds 10 crore, it is 5%. And these are the some specific rates I was talking about. In certain situation, even if here turnover doesn't matter, but company can pay at 25%. Okay. And here also, in this particular situation, if the company opts for 150 BAA, company will be paying tax at what rate? 22%. And 100 section, uh, 115 BAB, company pay, pay tax as low as 15%. And this is the surcharge rates. It might be 7% or 12%, it might be 10%, it might be again 10%. Like this. In any other case, company may tax at pay tax at the rate of 7% or 12%. So this is the normal rate applicable to a company. Fine. Now you might be thinking that what are these sections where company can pay 22%, 15%. Okay. Or even if turnover is exceeding 400 crore, it may still pay at 25%. You might be wondering to know these sections. Okay. We will not go deep into that, but I will give you some brief idea about that what this section. So these are optionals. Uh, these are, you can say, optional skips. Just like an individual, we have seen there is an option. You can opt for a lower rate of tax. Here also, these options are there, but there are certain conditions attached to these options. Conditions like company must have been incorporated in a particular period and company must be doing something like this, these conditions are there. So what I'm doing, let me, let me right now take you 
to this income tax department's written taxes, uh, tax rates, uh, which is published there. Okay. Now, can you see it here? Special rates for domestic company. Yes. If 115 BA, we will be referring to for assessment 2023, it might be 22%. 115 BAA, 22%, and 115 BAB, 15%. Okay, just let us have a look. Let me click here. If you click here, you can open that section. Otherwise, directly you can go to the Income Tax Act link and read this particular section. Should we go to this section? What is this 115 BA? Yes. Let me take you there. Now you can find out. You see 115 BA has a pot here. Okay, now you can see not withstanding anything contained in this act, something it has said, it says, finally, if you see, it says the, uh, that means the tax may be computed at the rate of, you see, 25%. That means not with, uh, not withstanding anything. That means in certain situations, it might be 30%, but here it will rate will be computed 25%. If this conditions contained in subsection 2 are satisfied, so these are the conditions. Used. Company has been set up and registered on or after first day of March, March 2016. So it must have been a new company, it must have been incorporated after this thing. Company is not engaged in the business other than the business of manufacture or production of a particular thing and research in relation to distribution of such article thing manufactured produced by it. So like this, this is conditions are there. Okay, the income, how the income has to be computed, certain deductions will not be allowed. After that, only income will be computed on that amount, 25% will be there. Okay, so like this, certain conditions are there. If these conditions are complied with, then only 25% rate is applicable. Got it, friends? Yes, sir. Okay. Similarly, uh, once again, let me again take you to the rates and charts. Okay. Now, if you refer to similarly 115 BAA, BAA rate of tax is not 25%, here is 22%. But this is again off, off, off stamp, where it is opted for this, you opt for this scheme. You can understand 115 BAA. Here you see the rate of 22%. You see, it is the income tax act itself. These rates are there. This is not there in the financial yes, special rates. You see. Okay, these are the called as special rates. Sometimes you see income tax act specifies. Act itself specifies the 22%. Again, similar kind of condition provided certain things. Okay, like this, how the income has to be computed, it has been explained certain deductions will not be allowed. So these are the sections we'll be learning. This is the, some exemption section. These are the under profit and gains of business and profession in that head, we'll be learning this section. Okay, so certain, let us say for, these are the some deductions allowed from business income. So these things will not be allowed. After that only, you'll be computing your income on that thing, you'll be able to pay 22%. Got it. Similarly, again, I'll be showing you the third section also. Hundred fifteen BAB. Here the tax rate is fifteen percent. Okay, if you see hundred fifteen BAB, let me show you this section. Hundred fifteen BAB. You can see the rate of tax is how much? Can you read it here? Top second line, 15%. But again, this condition has to be satisfied. Okay, here the company has been set up and registered on or after first day of October 2019. Okay. And commenced manufacturing or production of particular thing before 31st day of March 2023. 
within this period, company must have incurred. And there are some other conditions are there. They must be using new plant and machinery like this. Certain conditions are there. And that has to be compliant. And all if all of them are compliant, the company can pay tax at the top 15%. Got it, friends? Yes. Now, are you confident? Are you confident that in case someone is asking you that how we can do tax planning? You can suggest in this situation, if you do this kind of activities, the tax rate can be reduced. 25% can be reduced to 22% or it can be reduced to 15% also, provided you have to comply with all these things. Right, so normal rate is 25% or 30%. But there are possibilities if the companies are engaged in some specific activities and they're incorporated during a particular time then deductions, then uh, it is possible that they may pay tax at a lower rate. Okay, friends, and this 115 BA, 115 BAA, 115 BAB, these are optional. Company may pay tax at the normal rate, but if you want, you can exercise this option. Okay, certain deductions will not be allowed. Income has to be computed in a different manner. And on that income, this concessional tax rate should be applied. Okay, friends? Yes, sir. Okay, right. Now, friends, now what you have understood right now, farms tax rates you have seen, companies tax rates you have seen. So in case of companies and farm you have seen, there is no exemption limit. Is there any basic exemption limit? Then up to this much, no tax. Is it there? Yes or no? Did you find in case of farms or companies that is a basic exemption no, limit? No, it is not there. And you have also seen it is not slab rate, it's a flat At one rate, it will be taxed. And in case of companies, there is one more provision is applicable that is called as a minimum alternate tax. And this is 15% of book profit. What is that? We'll be understanding this thing. And AMT is for farm. As you can see, AMT. AMT is, I think it is 18.5%, but MAT is 15%. I will check it out. What is the rate of AMT in appropriate time? Uh, 115 JC. Yeah, 18.5%. MAT is 15% for the companies. You might be wondering, what is this? What is this MAT or in? Friends, you see. <clears throat> Income tax allows certain deductions, certain reliefs, certain rebates, or it allows when you are computing business income, uh, certain expenses are allowed. Okay. And there is a possibility that one may take advantages of this deductions, rebates, reliefs, consequently may pay or may, may, may pay lower tax. How it can pay lower tax? It is possible that under Income Tax Act, that profit he con contributes can be lower than his normal. Okay, these possibilities are there. We'll be learning gradually. Just for your understanding, let me give you one example. Suppose your normal book profit, you are charging depreciation and assuming that the life of the one asset, that's the life of the computer is, let us say you are achieving 10 years. So 10% depreciation you are charging on a straight line. Accordingly, you are arriving at the profit. Okay. But income tax law says on computer, you can take depreciation up to 40%. So if you take 40% depreciation, what will happen? Your profit will be less. You'll be paying less tax. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So this is just example where Income Tax Act allows some extra deductions. So because of which 
that you can use it as your tax planning. Consequently, your book profit might be high. That means your, but loosely right now we'll understand your accounting profit might be more. But profit under income tax law might be less because you are taking advantage of, of this. In accounting, you may charge 10% deficit. But for tax calculation, you can charge 40% deficit because law allows you to take higher deficit. Okay? Are you getting yes, me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, what will happen? So consequently, some people or some assets may take benefit of all these things. And they may end up in paying a very low tax or they may not be paying any tax at all. Because they do that kind of tax. Okay. There might be, in accounting books, there might be profit. But under, under income tax, there might be loss also. So you are not paying any tax. Okay, to address that kind of situation, what has happened? Law has made a picture that, okay, as a company, let us say, you are supposed to pay tax 30%. Normally, you say. Okay, but what you have to do if, let us say, for some reason, your income tax profit is lower, or you are incurring a loss, then you have to pay a minimum amount. That minimum, you have to pay 15% of not your income tax profit, 15% of your book profit. 15% of book profit you have to pay. Okay, this is called as an alternate. <laughs> Minimum you have to pay this much, therefore it is called as a minimum alternate tax. Okay, suppose you see, let me give you an example again. Okay. Suppose your profit for income tax purpose is one. Lakh. Profit for income tax purpose is one. Lakh. And you are, you are supposed to pay on that 30 percent. That means 30,000 rupees tax you are supposed to pay. Okay. Income tax profit is 1 lakh. You are paying 30 percent. 30,000 tax you are supposed to pay. This is your, your normal tax. I call it as the normal tax. But your book profit, that means accounting profit is not 1 lakh. Let us say it is 10 lakh. Okay, and what is the what is the fifteen percent of ten lakh? How much? One lakh fifty thousand. Okay, one lakh fifty thousand. This fifteen percent of ten lakh is called as the mat. That is minimum ultimate. So you normally you are supposed to pay thirty lakh rupees, but you have to pay minimum one lakh fifty thousand rupees because. 15.5-15% of your book profit you have to pay. So what you are supposed to do actually, you have to compute first of all normal tax. Then compute 15% of your book profit. Whichever is higher, you may pay. Not you may pay, you have to pay. That. Okay. So even if you are finding your tax, payable under income tax law is lower, but you have to pay at least 15%. So that's referred to as minimum alternate tax. Did you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, let me share the screen with you. So that's what you see. Farms are liable to pay alternate minimum tax, which is 18.5%, and companies liable to pay minimum alternate tax, which is 15% of the 
Now, accordingly, what happened? You are paying more. So, actually, your tax liability is 30%, 30,000. But how much you are paying? 1,50,000 rupees. Okay. Extra, how much you are paying? 1,20,000 rupees extra you are paying. That 1,20,000 rupees, you can take it as your bad credit. That means it will be appearing in your credit. You can set up. Okay. In future, there is a possibility that your normal tax might be more and your tax on good profit might be less. That situation might be there in future years. If that thing happens, the extra credit or the extra amount which is appearing in the credit can be adjusted. This is called as the mat credit and this can be carried forward up to 15 assessment years. Did you understand? Or should I repeat it? Yes, sir. Please. I told you one more thing. That if you are talking about a company, they are supposed to... Uh, sorry, if you are talking about a company, then the provisions of MAT will be applicable to them. What is that provision? We will be computing normal tax on the income tax profit. And we will be also computing tax payable on the book profit. Normal tax is the rate which is applicable to the company, which is maybe 30% or 25%. And tax on the book profit will be at the rate of 15%. Here in your example, your income tax profit is 1 lakh. So 30% of that let us say 30,000. Book profit is 10 lakh. On 10 lakh, 15 percent is 1 lakh, 50,000 rupees. So, whichever is higher, that has to be paid. So, higher is 1 lakh, 50,000 rupees, 1 lakh, 50,000 rupees will be paid. And if you are paying 1 lakh, 50,000 rupees, you are paying extra 1 lakh, 20,000 rupees. 1 lakh, 50 minus 30,000 rupees. That extra is, will be called as your bad credit. That can be carried forward for 15 assessment. And next year, let us say reverse thing happens. Book profit is less, income tax profit is more. That means even if your book profit is less, you have to pay more tax because income tax profit is more. Okay, you have to pay more tax. At that time, you will not pay more tax. What you will be doing? The credit which is available in the mat that can be used. Yes, sir, got it. Sir. Are you getting it? So this is the provision. Let me show you the slides related to that. Now have a look. You know, farms, if they are subject, uh, companies are subject to minimum alternate tax. What is the minimum alternate tax? So as per this provision, the tax liability of the company will be higher of the following. What is the higher? Which, which are these following things? Tax liability of the company computed as per normal provisions of income tax law or tax computed at 15%. Of course, on that, such as will be applicable or 15% of the book. So, we will be computing tax as per normal provisions of the income tax law or 15% of the book. Whichever is higher, that will be deposited as minimum alternate tax. Got it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And on some specific organizations like International Financial Service Centers, it is not 15%, it is 9%. Okay. It is only for some specific companies. We'll, for the timing, let us forget here. Okay. And MAT is not applicable when the companies are opting these provisions like 115 BAA, 115 BAB. We have seen that thing. Or a company is, uh, uh, let's say, earning income from the life insurance business, or a shipping company which is subject to tonnage taxes, and certain foreign companies also, MAT is not applicable. 
but for other companies, MAT is applicable to them. Okay, where MAT is not applicable? I'm so specific for foreign companies. I am showing you here, but we let us not go deep into this uh, at this point of time. But if you want, you can pause the video and read this book at an appropriate time. But one thing we have understood that we need to know what is my income tax profit and what is my book profit. On that book profit, I'll be calculating 15%. On my income tax profit, I'll be calculating normal rate. Okay, whichever is higher, I'll be. If I'm paying extra, that will be carried forward as a mat credit. Okay, now again, I'm explaining these concepts. What is the meaning of book profit? Because I have to calculate 15% of book profit. This has been explained in section 115 JP. What is the meaning of book profit? But right now, again, I'm not teaching you in detail all these things. So it means net profit as shown in the statement of profit and loss prepared in accordance with the schedule three of the company's act 2013. Okay, that means the way accounting profit is arrived, that profit. But there will be some adjustments. Something is to be added, something is to be increased, something to be decreased here. How book profit will be calculated? What has to be added? What is to be deducted? Maybe in appropriate time later on we can read it. But right now, let me explain you. This is these are the steps which are involved in computation of part. Okay. Now, please read this. What is step one, step two, step three, step four? Some of you, please read it out so that I'll be explaining. Point one. Let's compute total income. Okay. First, you need to find out what is your total income. Then. Compute tax as per normal provisions of IT Act. That means you have to compute either at 25% if it is domestic company or 30% if it is domestic company or foreign company also, 45%, 50%, you have to compute as per the normal provisions of income tax. So step one, step two, you have understood. What is step three? Compute book profit under section 115 JB. So this book profit means your accounting profit. Accounting profit subject to some adjustments. Okay, what are the adjustments? You have to report to section 115 JB, subsection two, to understand how this will be adjusted. So right now we'll understand we are completing the accounting work. Then point four, step four. Compute fifteen percent of book profit. Okay, fifteen percent of the book. Now you see, here you have computed a tax at uh, normal provisions. Here we are computing fifteen percent of profit. Step five. Tax liability before surcharge is step two or step four, whichever is higher. Now you have to say either step two or step four. Whichever is higher, that is your tax liability you have to pay. On that, add surcharge, add your cess, health and education cess, 4% you have to add. Then the mad credit can be carried forward for eight, sorry, for 15 assessment years. Understood the process? Yes, sir. And for alternate minimum tax, which is applicable to farms, here also process is same, but here alternative income tax or minimum, uh, alternate minimum tax rate is not 15%, it is 18.5%. Uh, 18, 18 okay, so that we have to take care of. Is it clear to you regarding tax rates of companies? Yes, sir. Understood. It may be little, it may be appearing little complex to you because one thing you have understood the normal tax rate is 30%. But after that, you have to also apply the provisions of MAT. You have to find out book profit and as an alternative calculation, calculate 15% of that. Which average is higher, you have to. Okay, 
And for, if you want to understand provisions of MART in detail, I'll be sending you a separate material you may read, which you may read it. Okay, but at basic level, is it clear to you? Yes. At a basic sir. level, I'm asking. Okay, right. Now, let us see tax rates for some other kind of assets. Next type of assets is cooperative society. For cooperative society, slab is it's like this. If income is up to 10,000 rupees, what is the rate? 10%. 10%. And above 10,000, up to 20,000 rupees? 20%. Above 20,000 rupees? 30%. 30%. Okay. Surcharge of 12% is applicable if the total income exceeds 1 crore. Health and education says is also 4%, which is applicable on income tax plus surcharge. Alternate minimum tax, 18.5% of the book profit will also be calculated. This is the normal provision. But for this assessment year onwards, that means assessment year 22 23, uh, there is one additional optional section. Okay, it is called as 115 BAD, just like in companies also here you see. If a cooperative society opts this particular provision, the tax rate will be 22% instead of this slab rate, flat 22%. Surcharge will be 10% and sales will be 4%. So there is a possibility that the conditions which are contained, contained in section 150 BAD, if these conditions are complied with, then a cooperative society may pay tax at the rate of 22%. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, one more category of persons are local authorities. Tax rates are thirty percent flat. Surcharge is again twelve percent. Twelve percent of income tax if the total income exceeds rupees one crore. Sales is four percent. AMT is also applicable. 18.5% on income tax, uh, sorry, plus surcharge, plus surcharge plus sales. Understood? So we have read almost all the, all we have seen rates applicable to various kinds of persons. Lastly, as I told you, it, the tax rates are normally prescribed in the Finance Act. You have to refer to the finance act of the relevant assessment here. But there are some rates which are specified in the income tax act. We may call it as the special uh, special rate. For example, on short-term capital gains on equity and average rate of tax is 15%. Long-term capital gain, 20%. Lottery crossword puzzles, 30%. So these are the sections in which of income tax act is mentioned, section 111A, section 112. Section 115 BB. And MAT, just now we are seeing that 18.5% of AMT, MAT is 15%. Okay. Then anonymous donations, this is 30%. So, like this, there are some special rates which are there in the Income Tax Act. Is it clear to you? Yes, sir. Now, having understood this, one more thing also we need to understand. That is the concept of marginal rates. What is that? So this thing we'll do uh, maybe in the next session. So next session we'll see, uh, again, we'll be using tax calculators for various types of assets we have seen. For companies also we'll be using tax calculators. But what is this marginal relief? As you have seen in case of individuals also, if the total income exceeds a specific limit, let us say for 50 lakh, then he has to pay a surcharge. So because of this situation may cause some genuine hardship to the assessor. So up to 50 lakh, let us say he is paying something, but above 50 lakh, suddenly he will be paying more. For example, if I show you this calculation, 
just a bit. Yeah, these are the, let us say for this is the calculation you can see. Let us say total income is 50 lakh and total income is 50 lakh 100. Are you seeing it? So yes, in sir. case of two, up to 2 lakh 50,000 nil, nil, 2 lakh 50,000 to 5 lakh 5 percent, it comes to 12,500, 12,500. 5 lakh to 10 lakh 20 percent. So 1 lakh rupees, both the cases. Above 10 lakh 30 percent, so it comes to 12 lakh, 12 lakh. So total amounts come to 13 lakh 12,500. Here it comes 13 lakh 12,530 because 100 rupees extra 30 percent of that. But here surcharge is not applicable. Here surcharge is applicable. Is it not? Okay. So if you apply surcharge 10%, the tax liability becomes 14 lakh 43,783. Okay. And in this situation, you are seeing the SSC has to pay 1 lakh 31,283 rupees extra. Just because his income has exceeded 50 lakh by rupees 100. Difference is only 100. But what is the difference in tax? 1,31,283. So, is it not a genuine problem? So, therefore, what will happen? Therefore, these provisions of marginal relief series that a relief will be provided to ensure that the additional income tax payable okay, is not exceeding your additional income. What is your additional income? 100 rupees. What is your additional uh, tax you are paying? 1,31,283. So you will be allowed a relief for further difference. That means you will be allowed a relief of how much? 1,31,283 minus 100. You will be getting 1,31,183. Okay. If you allowed this relief, so how much you will be paying? 13,12,600. Okay. You are paying rupees 100 or extra only. Your income is rupees 100 and you are paying extra income is 100. You are also paying rupees uh, extra tax is 100. So this provision ensures that your additional tax is not exceeding your additional income. Okay, additional tax is exactly equal to your additional. But of course, on that thing, you have to pay health and education says 4%. And then total amount, you can find out this much money has to be paid. 13,65,100. If you round it up to nearest rupees 10. Did you understand? Yes, sir. Okay. Is it clear up to this? Yes, sir. The concept of uh, complete taxes by using tax calculators we will be learning. Again, the concept of marginal relief and concept of part. I will repeat it in your next session. Then we will move ahead. Is it okay? Yes, sir. We will stop yes, here for the timing. We'll catch up again in your next class. You have any specific query? No, sir. Thank you very much.